Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. Today I have another Halloween craft video for you. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the projects. For my first project, I'm going to be using a wooden ghost and I bought this at Target. It is the Mondo Llama. It is wood-based ghost, that's all it says. And I wanna say this was like $5 or less. It was in the art supplies. And um, now these eyes and nose are raised. So you can see that right there. And obviously they don't come off. So I wanted to cover this with um, this particular material here. This is just some scrapbook paper. It is the Doodlebug Sweet and Spooky Halloween um, scrapbook paper that you have seen on the channel previously. And I thought I would just use this side here. Now I've been thinking about how I could get around the three-dimensional eyes. So what I did is I painted with my um, white chalk paint. I painted the eyes. I painted the sides of the eyes and then a little bit of around the eye so that when I cut out these particular ovals, if there's any residual space in between the oval and the paper, it will be covered by the white. The other thing I did is I actually left a little extra paint on top of the eyes and the nose. And then I literally just took my ghost with the paint on top and I placed it down on my paper, just like a stamp. What this will allow me to do is I will actually be able to cut out very carefully these little paint ovals. And I'm just gonna go slow and steady. And then when I'm done, they should fit over the wooden pieces. Okay, so I have my eyes cut out and then I'm just gonna kind of Go along the inside here and make it a little smoother. So funny story, this wood blank is actually the second wood blank that I have purchased for this particular project. Then I, I put everything away where I needed it to go and I went out of town and I come back and I'm getting ready for this particular project and the bag is missing. So this is the second time I have purchased this particular deal. Okay, so you can see that my idea is working here and over on this side, I just have to, I think I just need to trim it just a bit here on the inside. I have looked high and low <laughs> and I just can't find it. So I just went and bought a new shirt and a new ghost and you know, I bet you when we are packing up here over the next few weeks for our move, we will find that bag. Either that or somebody mistakenly put it in a box that for the thrift store run and then that went to the thrift store. Okay, there we go. I think that's going to fit just fine. That worked well. Okay, so just word of note. I just used my white chalk paint and I painted over the eyes. I painted around the edge of the eyes. There we go. You can see where the eyes are just ever so slightly, I don't wanna say raggedy, but ever so slightly raggedy. And that's okay because that paper is going to cover it all up. And then I'm, I'm just going to paint a coat of Mod Podge over this and then we'll put that paper down and we're going to let this dry while we work on some other crafts and I don't think that I'm going to seal it. I know um, you can definitely paint some Mod Podge on top and seal the paper but I am okay not sealing the paper. I think that that's plenty or at least I hope that that's plenty. So then I'll just place that over the eyes again and get those pressed down in there. I don't wanna get stuff on the paper, so I'm just gonna use this little microfiber towel to just help me 
push all of this down onto the wood. And then we're just going to let this sit while we work on the other couple of crafts. Then we'll come back and finish this later in the video. For my next craft, I will be reusing this particular frame that I did in a previous video. And I basically am going to change out um, the image. So this particular image here, this is the back side of the insert. And this is printable vinyl. And I just put it down on there and put it in the frame. So I'll be saving that because I do think it's cute. This particular image here, this was um, something that I found on, uh, I believe I found this on Creative Fabrica. And I love it because I love the watercolor. I'm really starting to just really get into watercolor uh, images. I just think they're amazing. It's a haunted house. And what I did is I did um, print and cut image, right? So I brought this into Cricut Design Space, uploaded it as a print and cut image. Then I added a four by four square and I put this on top of that square and I did a line and center so that when I printed this to my printer, it printed on cardstock. This is in fact 110 pound cardstock. And then I had the Cricut just cut the square out for me. So yes, I could have probably done my paper trimmer, but why not? I was already in the Cricut software, so I thought I would just let it do its work for me. And then I am going to actually going to clean this particular frame on the inside just because of handling it. So I'm just using a little bit. Ooh, pardon that squeak there. Maybe it's on the other side that it's dirty. Okay, we'll clean the outside as well. All right, this is just that 91% alcohol. You know, I get it from Walmart and I'm gonna stick this in here. I actually may have to trim that down just a sliver. Let me grab my little paper trimmer, my tiny one, because I literally just need really a sliver off of two sides. I literally took a shave off of both of those. So I'm gonna put this back down in the frame, replace this. Let me make sure that I, yep, I have it the right way. Put the little tabs back down and there we go. That looks so good. Super easy, super beginner friendly. But just what a great way to add some decor. I love that. That is gorgeous. This is our quote first craft that is completed. And I think it is just amazing. I definitely love the little drips of watercolor. I think it just adds to that spooky element. All right, let's go ahead and move into our um, next project. Okay, hey, for my next project, I am going to be creating one of those directional arrow signs that can go in like a flower pot or a yard, you know, whatever you have that you'd like to decorate. These are those little uh, garden stakes that I got from Joanne. And I all I did was I used some Waverly antique wax um, lights where you get your chalk paint and I used a baby wipe and I just basically rubbed it all over the front of the garden stakes to give them a weathered look. I have four of them here. Then this piece of wood is actually a really nice scrap of wood. Um, I think it's like a cherry or something. It's out of my dad's wood shop. And I love it because I can always go to dad's wood shop and get scrap wood and make things for um, the crafts that I have. So it is just really such a blessing. This is what I thought I would do is I would be decorating the little slats. And then I think I'm just going to hot glue them on and let them be, you know, a little wonky. 
So it'll look like this when we're finished. For our arrows, we have broom parking, we have ghost town, and I actually have a white overlay that goes on top of that little ghost. I have trick or treats, and I did another print and cut with, uh, I have like a little candy bucket, and I didn't want to mess with a bunch of tiny little vinyl pieces for this one. And so I thought the print thing cut would be easy. And then I also have pumpkin patch and I did cut out a tiny little pumpkin and it the stem. So let's go ahead and start working on these. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some transfer tape. And I've been working through this particular transfer tape. I think that is perfect there. This is Caesar clear um, with a grid. And what I like about it is it comes in a sheet that you can try so that you don't have to buy the whole roll and get committed to something that you may not like. Here we go, pumpkin patch. And I just ordered this from Expressions Vinyl and I get, you know, one sheet with my order and it's nice and easy to try it out. I will probably keep ordering it because I do like it. I do have several others and I just use them up as really, there we go. I think I want the pumpkin in that corner or with the rounded edge. I think that's what I want. I want the pumpkin in here with this rounded edge. So I'll just dry fit that. And then I'm gonna come in, I think that'll work. Okay, pumpkin patch is ready. Now I'm gonna just place this little stem piece like a sticker up here on my pumpkin. There we go. And then I'm just going to reuse that same little piece of transfer tape. And I think this is that. Yeah, this is that vinyl that I'm trying to use up. It does not like to come off the carrier sheet. So my last one was um, Expressions Vinyl, and this is Cricut. And I must just have a bad batch or something. Looks like I'm going to have to do some surgery here. I will just put this part of the pumpkin down, and then I will add these end pieces separately with my tweezers. I'm okay doing that. All right, so I'm gonna just put this on this end. There we go. And it's so funny because I have tried different transfer tapes. So it's not just a one, but it is okay. We will just we will just go with it. Okay, I think we got that fixed up there. So now we have pumpkin patch in the little pumpkin. That's so cute. I like it. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now this particular image here, this is my print and cut image. So I'm just gonna roll this back like that and I am going to just pull this one off like a sticker and I'm going to put it, well, before I do that, let's see how far I need it to be. So we're gonna be here and here. Okay, so I'll put it right in that spot. Okay, there's my little print thing cut sticker. Okay, there. I'm gonna move this up just a hair and then I'll add that bottom piece that and we'll just pop that right down there. Perfect. There we go. That looks really good. Okay, so the next thing will be to put on the trick or treats. So we have our little print and cut pumpkin and this is, 
this is Cricut. So I think I'm going to see if maybe trying a different transfer tape would be helpful. And that way I don't have to fight with my vinyl today. All right. Now, oh, that white looks so good against that brown. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe this new batch of vinyl from Cricut only likes the Cricut transfer tape, which is fine. I can totally handle that. All right, so we have pumpkin patch. We have tricks or treats. Okay, next we have, we have broom parking and we have ghost town. Now I'm going to grab this little white ghost right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down on top of this ghost right there. Then we'll just let it go ahead and lay down. So everyone is gone today and it's just me and my cricket and I'm just enjoying me and my cricket crafting for Halloween. All right, I'm gonna get this furnished on the back. Okay, so I think I want the ghost, since it's rounded, to be on that end. This particular craft, I will be linking down in the description for you. This particular project was made in Design Space. The Creative Fabrica and Design Bundles SVGs that I'll be using today, I will just link those um, for you down in the description. You'll have to go directly to those websites. Otherwise, Cricut will not let me share I won't be able to share it with you. It would only be viewable. Okay, so Tricks or Treats, Pumpkin Patch, Ghost Town, and now Broom Parking. And I like the idea of the witch broom being on that pointed end over there. I really, really, really enjoy sharing the design files that I use. Um, and even my, my projects directly in design space, I like sharing those as well. I just find it so much easier for you to be able to recreate. Okay, so I sized this where it should fit all at one time. Perfect, just like that. This is going to be so cute when it is done. And if these would be like, if you have someone who has a fall birthday and they like to garden, this would be a really cute um, gift, is something like this. All right, so the next thing will be for us to get this onto our wood. Just kind of decide how we want them. Okay, I'm good with that. I don't think it really expressly matters. Actually, I'm going to put my glue down on here. I think that'll be safest. And then I can smush it. There we go. That looks good. Okay. And then we'll do another one. Right. And then pumpkin patch. Now you could always um, use a staple gun and come in from the back, but you know, this really is so easy just to do hot glue. All right, so there we go. There's our little broom parking, ghost town, pumpkin patch, tricks or treats. That came out so good. I love it. That is awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next project. Okay, for my next project, I saw this particular um, SVG. Now, this was from Design Bundles, 
And I love it because it is so much like um, Bewitched. And I don't know, do you remember that show? I loved watching that growing up. So I found this particular SVG on Design Bundles and I love it. It's like Bewitched. You know, I loved that show growing up and I just thought Samantha was the coolest person on the planet. I thought this would be great to put on a mug and I did cut it out twice so that I could have it on both sides. So I'm gonna bring back in my rubbing alcohol, clean off the surface of this mug. Now I'm using vinyl on this mug because this mug is from the Dollar Tree and I love the, um, I love how tall it is. It kind of looks like some of my 15 ounce Cricut mugs. And I like the fact that the sides are straight. All right, so will this work? Oh, that will work perfect. I'm gonna burnish this down. I'll probably take this one to school, I think. My husband is like about to restrict me from making mugs, but they're so cute and I find so many cute designs and you can do vinyl or you can use infusible ink. Okay, so here's what I'm noticing. My Expressions Vinyl is really liking the Caesar and then my Cricut Vinyl really only likes the Cricut transfer tape. So that is okay. We will remember that. And I'm just leaving about an inch at the top to allow for um, the sip margin. Vinyl is not food safe. I drink a lot of coffee. So I've done quite a few mugs on the channel and I've done several infusible ink mugs and those are my favorite because those are immediately dishwasher safe, microwave safe, etc. This particular mug is perfect for going to school with me because I don't have a dishwasher um, at school. I do have a microwave in my room, but not a dishwasher. Okay, put that down. I'll just have to let this sit for, you know, 24, 48 hours, maybe, probably 24. Okay, now this one, let's see. And it was about an inch from the top. This would make a cute gift. You could fill it with tea bags or hot cocoa mix, a gift card or coffee. But this would be so cute for a little, a little gift as well. Perfect. Yay, that looks so good. Okay, so here is my little witch's brew cup. Gives me nostalgic vibes thinking of Samantha. Oh, I love it. Okay, I will link this SVG down in the description for you so that you can um, go directly to Design Bundles and get that if you so desire. All right, let's move on to our next craft. Okay, our next craft is an iron-on craft. And I am making myself a sweatshirt. That is one of the things I love about my Cricut is that, um, well, I'm a high school teacher, so I don't, I have to be careful about what I put on my shirts. Um, I can make myself really fun spirit wear in a pinch, but I thought it would be fun to make some Halloween themed things. So this is gonna be a sweatshirt. This is just um, a sweatshirt from Michaels. It's the Make Market and guys, this is so soft. Like this is super soft. The other brand that they carry is what I normally get in t-shirts, but oh my goodness, this sweatshirt is so soft and the the other brand, it, it was not as soft as this one. The SVG that I am using today is gonna be super fun. First of all, it says Halloween Town. 
Isn't that great? And it's in the varsity. I just love it. So my daughter, well, she's going to be 13 soon. So she's rolling her eyes at me quite a bit. But she and I have watched all of the Halloween Town movies over the years and rewatched them. And I saw this. This is on Design Bundles too. I'll link this one. And I just was like, oh my goodness, I have to have that shirt. She was not so impressed. I am using something new to me. This is called um, Strip Flock Pro. And it is velvety. And let's see if I can show you on camera. So the back side is, you know, this is where you, the cut side, right? You put the shiny side down like normal on your mat. But when you pull it off, it's this beautiful velvety plushy. It's real thin, so it's not thick and puffy, but it's just a beautiful velvet. I mean, this is amazing. I think I'm going to be making myself some fall shirts and some Christmas shirts. This stuff is awesome. And this is by Caesar, and I got this from Expressions Vinyl, so I will link that for you. Funny story, I um, got it all weeded. Well, I started to weed it out, and I was like, why is this not weeding? It wouldn't weed. And yes, I did cut it on the correct side and everything. So I stopped what I was doing, went and got another cup of coffee, and then I thought, well, maybe my cut settings were wrong. And sure enough, I checked on the website, and the cut setting, there is flocked iron-on vinyl cut setting in Cricut Design Space. And I had not chosen that. So it's flocked iron-on for your cut setting, default pressure. And then this weeded beautifully. Like, it's perfect. It did not give me any trouble. It was just like butter. So I just had to tell you that because I had to recut it. It was kind of funny. I just thought I would share my little mishap for you because I make a lot of them. I am always messing up with crafts, but to me, that's part of crafting is you try something and it doesn't work right, and then you try it again and it works fine. I'm going to go ahead and actually, I need to do this. I'm going to lint roll the shirt. I've already heated it. Okay. But I'm excited to try this product out. Uh, your heat press setting is 311. That's a very precise number, but 311 for 15 seconds. And I did wash and dry this. In fact, I just took this out of the dryer. Now my Cricut heat press only goes, it does 310 or 315. Like I don't know how to get it to do 311. So I'm just going to do 310. So I'll probably just leave it on there for a little bit longer than 15 seconds. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that's good. I'm going to take this and kind of eyeball the middle. And I'm just going to double check that it's, you know, fairly centered. Oh yeah, that's great. All right, here we go. I'm going to put this down and do 15 seconds. It does say medium pressure, so I'm just barely putting my hands on here. Okay. And then according to the directions, you peel this up when it is still warm. I'm really hoping that this worked, and I'm going to just go very slowly. Oh, it's so soft. I might spot it like maybe five more seconds but this has laid down so nicely i'm wondering if everybody needs a flocked sweatshirt for christmas that would be so fun that is amazing it is so velvety soft i cannot get over that i think i'm gonna do well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I normally do, and that is I'm going to turn it over to the back, and then I'm going to heat it on the back just for a few seconds. I tend to have really good luck heating both sides. Remove, remove that mat, and all right, that looks so good. Y'all, I cannot get over 
the f- oh, this is so soft and fuzzy, but it's not like puffy. This is amazing. Okay, well, let's go back to our little ghost friend and get him wrapped up. And then we'll take a look at all of the crafts today and decide which one we like best. Okay, so here's my little ghost and definitely this is attached very well. So I'm literally just going to go around the perimeter. I'm going to cut away the scrapbook paper. This is very easy. And then I'm just gonna grab my sanding block and I'm gonna go along the edge, clean up those rough edges a little bit. Okay, there we go. And my daughter absolutely loves pink. And so this would be so cute. Like either, well, I guess she could put it in her bedroom, but definitely like in her bathroom, this would be super fun. Okay, let me bring back in all of the crafts that were made today and we can decide which one is our favorite. These are all the crafts that we did today. These are so fun. I really love how all of these turned out. And to be honest, I am really having a hard time picking a favorite. So the first craft was that um, Mondo Llama wood base from Target with the raised eyes and we cut those out, glued on this scrapbook paper from Doodlebug with Mod Podge and just let it sit there. That did a great job. A Little bit of some chalk paint on the eyes. And so that is super cute, easy, very inexpensive. Okay, so the next, uh, the next gift, the next, yes, the next gift to myself so then is my favorite frame from Dollar Tree and this um, watercolor print and cut print. This is just amazing. And I love how it turned out. I just printed this on 110 pound cardstock. I cut it down to the size that needed to fit in the frame with my Cricut using that print and cut feature. And this is just Phenomenal. I love it. This is fantastic. Easy way to make some decor for your home. And then we had this right here. So this was print and cut, and all of the rest on here is vinyl. And we've got our little pumpkin, our little ghost, our witch's broom. And I just got all of this from Design Space. So this particular is, um, this is Creative Fabrica. I will link that in the description. All of this is Design Space. And what I will do is link the Design Space project file down in the description as well. So you can actually recreate this yourself. I did use the antique wax um, on the wood so that I could get it to be a really nice color and then just hot glued all of those to this particular um, long piece of wood. The next thing was my Witch's Brew and this is a Design Bundles SVG. I will link that in the description for you, but I just used regular, you know, regular vinyl and put it on my mug that I got from Dollar Tree. And I really like the size of the mug and I really like the the shape of the mug. I just I, I just think it's very um, simple and striking. So got Witch's Brew. And then finally, we have our Halloween Town University sweatshirt. So the sweatshirt is from Michaels. This is Caesar Strip Flock Pro. It is so velvety soft, and this was really easy to weed once I cut it a second time using the correct cut settings. If you try this out, make sure that you use the flocked iron-on setting in your Cricut 311 for 15 seconds. And I did go ahead and iron on the back just for good measure. But this is wonderful. It's so soft and the sweatshirt is soft. I'm loving this so much. I think 
that my favorite is probably going to be the sweatshirt because I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of that and I just can't get over how it feels. So this is probably my favorite. But then, um, you know, this right here is a close second because I just love that watercolor image and I just think it is so striking. That is all I have for this video and I hope that this has inspired you to make some fun things for the Halloween season or you could even do fall crafts in the similar fashion. Don't forget that I'll be linking everything in the description as well as listing all the materials and supplies that I use. And if you found this video helpful in any way, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your crafty friends. So until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thanks for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day. And as always, happy crafting.